so I got the notification asking for videos from physician scientists uh, to talk to undergrads about who we are and what we do and what drove us into this field. Um, I thought I might as well just try to write this, do this video as quickly as possible. So I'm at work today <laughs> um, on an incubation period, so I have a couple of minutes, so I thought I'd chat. Okay, I wrote down what questions you guys wanted me to cover. So my name, position, institution. The name is easy. My name is Taylor Heald Sargent. Um, position's a little tricky. I just finished my pediatric infectious disease fellowship last week, and I am going to be starting as an assistant professor at Lurie Children's Hospital in a couple of months. So in the intervening time, instead of taking some time off, I wanted to continue research, and thankfully with a PhD you can do that. So right now I am a postdoc in a lab, um, actually working on some work for coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2, and also on Kawasaki disease. So I, I'm kind of living the physician scientist lifestyle right now where I'm going back and forth really between clinical work and research work, and I'm happy to just have work. <laughs> okay, so I think I'll jump to my one piece of advice for applicants right now, which is hard to come down to one piece of advice, but I think when I talk about the rest of these answers, you'll see why I have this one piece of advice. And really it's make sure you really like what you're getting into. Um, I know when I was applying, thinking way back when, um, I knew it was a long time and that's why the process of the whole MD PhD was a long process. And I, that's why I said, I need to get this done right out of undergrad. I want to keep going. I don't want to take any breaks because it's going to take a long time. And everybody said, but do you understand how long it is? I don't think you can ever understand how long it is until you've lived it. Um, and certainly my spouse did not understand how long it was going to take um, when we started out on this process. But with that said, I still don't regret it. Um, although I just finished my training last week and I'm finally getting my first real job ever. Um, and I'm in my mid thirties, a lady never says her exact age. Um, it's still been worth it, but that's because I love what I do. So why did I pursue physician scientist training? Well, I wanted to really be able to go from the bedside to the bench, which is, I know what everybody says, but I, I honestly found, I find science so interesting. I actually fell in love with micropipetters in high school and I thought I just want to be a scientist. And then as I went through my undergrad training and I met, people who had their PhDs, they advised me with my interest in helping, you know, humans and human disease to look at doing the combined program and getting my MD certainly has helped me a lot in science. And it's provided me with opportunities I wouldn't have had if I had um, just done the PhD route. And coming from the flip side, having your PhD in addition to an MD gives you an understanding of science, an understanding of what you do in the clinics every day, what orders you're ordering, how they're actually being performed that you wouldn't get if you didn't have that scientific background. And it allows you to answer some of the questions that you encounter in clinic, or at least find the people that can help you answer those questions because everything nowadays is team science. So how I spend my days right now and how I felt my current field. I found my current field because when I was an undergrad, I went to a summer at Mount Sinai, which I understand some of you guys aren't able to do right now. Um, but there I got matched up with a lab that was looking at virology and I just fell in love. And I really haven't looked back since. I found out I love viruses, which led me into the field of infectious disease. I always knew I wanted to do pediatrics because I like kids and adults can be stinky and it's not because they have something in their diaper. Just kidding. Um, but I, I knew infectious disease was for me from that lab experience early on and I've pursued it ever since. Um, and actually what I'm doing now is studying this amazing pandemic. Um, amazing is probably not the right word. It's terrible. Word. It's terrible. Um, as someone I said the other day, it's fascinating, except it's deadly. It would, it's such a hard conundrum for scientists that love to study viruses because our scientific minds are invigorated and excited every day by the new work that's coming out. But humanity is suffering so much. It's really tearing me in two, but I'm just trying to focus on what I can do to help, which with my MD PhD in infectious disease and virology, actually coronavirus virology, I've been able to try to do a lot. So today I'm actually 
setting off some sequences um, from some PCRs I ran earlier in the week. Um, so that's what I'm physically doing today. But in overall, what I was able to do during this pandemic and when we were stuck at home was get a group of researchers together at our institution. And we were all interested in studying what was going on in the infection in children. And actually, I had never set up a biobank before, but under the mentorship of someone who I'd never worked with before, but who was interested in helping out, who's actually an ICU physician, I was able to set up a biobank of specimens from children admitted at our institution. And now we're able to use those to actually answer some basic science questions about um, our focus is on their immune re response to the infection and why children aren't as affected as severely as adults in a lot of cases. So I was really able to parlay the clinical interest I had in infectious disease in this pandemic and bring it into the scientific knowledge I gained during my PhD and start to answer some of these questions or at least help others because like I said, it's a team. So there's a lot of us on this team that are gonna make use of these samples to try to answer these questions in the upcoming months. Um, so if that hasn't been enough <laughs> to inspire you to pursue this degree, then um, you know, think about, like I said in the beginning, what really, how, how big is your motivation? So what I found thinking back to, you know, yes, this is a long road, am I still happy I did it? When I come to work every day, I, I have a hard time leaving. And that's not because I don't like my kids. I love my kids and my husband and I love coming home and cooking and working in my garden. But I also love my work and it is so much fun and I derive just a different intellectual stimulation here than I can get at home. I mean, toddlers are great, but they're not gonna be really discussing the intricate details of uh, virology, virus life cycle with you. So I, I think I'm really lucky to have found a career path and found a place to work that allows me to enjoy what I do so much. And on the clinical days, I also just love seeing those kids and helping them get better. That's one good thing about infectious diseases a lot of times we can help them out and we can cure them and then we never have to see them again and they can do really well. Um, so if you guys are thinking about infectious diseases, it's great. Happy to talk more about ID in, in another time, especially pediatric ID. We definitely need more physician scientists. Um, but yeah, so be it in the research bench or in the clinic, I really find myself at the end of the day not wanting to leave, except for the fact that I have a great home life too. So. Um, I really don't regret anything I did about this career path and about this, all my choices I've made. One big perk is that going with an MD PhD combined program, at least the one I was in, it afforded me the opportunity to pursue really what I love being a pediatric infectious disease, which is unfortunately one of the lowest paying specialties. I actually, I think I reduced my salary by doing a fellowship in this. I could have made more just as a general pediatrician, but with no school debt, from doing a combined program, I'm actually, I was freed up to follow my heart and to decide, you know, where it was that I wanted to study and what I wanted to do without the constraints of having that financial burden on me. I realize I'm starting to ramble, <laughs> but I told you I was just going to do this off the cuff so that I got it out for you guys. But I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, hopefully they'll be providing you with contact information along with this video. You can um, find me on Twitter or you can send me an email, um, but really I hope you guys find out what's right for your path and what most interests you and use that to guide you in deciding if you want to apply for a dual degree program. Okay, thanks guys.